Hi, it's Mr. D. Hobbs, and welcome to episode number 24 on the Kindred server. So you can see I'm just outside my base here at the moment. And we'll just flip back to normal view, there we go. Okay, it's dark, night time, so I'm going to try heading back indoors. But before I do so, you'll notice here a few little changes out here. Just made a little pathway from the uh, entrance just through to my little vegetable patch here. And then also made another pathway coming out from this side that leads up these stairs. And the reason for this is... Uh, a couple of days ago I actually found two zombie villagers and then I managed to heal them and put them back into normal villagers and this is my villager breeding area please don't leave the gates open ok so shut the gate oh there's an iron golem so as you see been quite busy managed to heal those two villagers first of all now, now I managed to change them into well, once they changed into normal villagers started breeding them up and as you see we've got quite a nice selection here of, of villagers varying from this guy here being a nice farmer doing a few good trades there and got a cleric there which we've got quite I've been doing a bit of work with as you can see got a leather worker there been doing a bit of work with another leather worker so I might have to get rid of that one the butcher I haven't had a chance to do anything with because I haven't got any raw chicken or raw um, pork a bit of an oversight there on my part. Um, this weaponsmith here, I've been working my way through, he's got a few good trades and things. So yeah, so a few useful guys there. Um, by the looks of things now, we seem to have maxed out on the number of villagers that I can have, given the size of this, in inverted quotes, village that I've got here. Um, unfortunately, they don't stand still long enough for me to count this all at one. Stand still, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, possibly eight, nine, something like that, I think, possibly. And it's eight doors on each side, which means there's 32 doors in total. Um, so that's about right, isn't it? Because it's three point, it's a third, is it a third of the number of doors or something? So should be able to get ten villagers, which is what I've got there. Um, so anyway, yeah. Some of all that means that basically I'm not going to get any more villagers than what I've got now. So I'm going to have to start culling some of the some of the ones I don't want anymore. And what I've done for that is I've set up this little railway cart track here the heads off down in that direction about 30 blocks or so so it's well out of the range of the detectable area for the far uh, for the village and then I'm gonna put a, a lava blade or something like that down there with a hopper system to bring the mine carts back around to here so yeah so that's that system all set up um, well will be all set up so shortly um, what I'm then going to start doing is I'm going to start extracting some of the really good villagers bringing them up here and having little pods up here for them don't know if this is quite far enough out of the range of the village to actually be classed as no longer part of the village or not. Um, only way of finding out is to try. If it if it doesn't, then what I'm probably going to have to end up doing is just shifting this village back over this way a bit more. And that's just a simple case of just breaking down some of the doors, moving some of the doors down further, and then rebuilding the roof across and things like that, just so that the, the village sort of shifts and slowly edges its way over this way. Um, so it's, it's possible to change it if I need to. I'm underneath the mountain here, so I've got quite a bit, bit of scope for uh, making changes to it and things. Okay, now the next thing I want, want to do, one of the villagers I've got has got quite a good trade on books, written books. Um, two written books for an emerald, which is, I think, pretty standard. Um, so for that, I'm going to need a lot of ink sacks. Now, there's only one small river that runs down the side of the base, about that, that sort of way somewhere. And I'm not getting all that many ink sacks from there so I'm going to start I'm going to create myself a, a squid farm um, which was recently showcased by JL2579 and if I remember I'll leave a, a link to his video in the description and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that over in, sort of in that direction somewhere so it's away from everything else and hopefully that'll have a good good spawn rate and give us a nice lot of ink sacks now um, oh, I can see a zombie down there okay so what I'll do is I'll cut here and then I'll make some progress on that and I'll bring you back Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, well this is the first section of the farm done. Um, so, as you can see, I'm now at... Uh, where are we? Level 30. And all the way up there is level 63. And this is a 13 by 13 block. Um, it's not cylinder, is it? It's a cube. So it's a 13 by 13 area there that I've covered out and yeah, completely cleared it all out. Only one cave that I came across, which is this area here where I've got the cobblestone um, and one little, rib, one little sort of underground 
rig running through there, but other than that, it all seems quite dry around here, which is good. So hopefully this point it's gonna be good. Okay. I'll um, come back to you again in a soon. Okay, thanks for watching. Oh bum. Looks like it's all gone wrong. Um not too sure exactly what happened. Maybe I uh, updated an ice block instead of when I was removing one of the uh, glowstones. But yeah, it's all gone a bit peat hole. Um hmm, not too sure exactly how I'm gonna do this because some of them are okay, but some of them have extended down to here, so I'm gonna have, just like I have to start again. And try not to get it wrong this time. Ho oh, hum. Okay. Second time lucky. Yay! It ended up being third time lucky, because second time round I uh, did the same mistake again as I did last time. So I may managed to um have to do it all over again, so this is now third time lucky. But it's now working. Um, one thing I will suggest to anybody else who makes this farm is that when you're working around these bottom bits just here, here which is where the ice melts and turns into static water, you must not place any place or break any blocks touching these bottom blocks here. Because as soon as you update anything around these blocks here, they then instantly turn into normal flowing water and cover the whole area and of course because they're only one block apart as soon as one joins into the next one it then becomes a water source and it becomes a complete pain to have to try and repair but I don't know if you noticed on the ground a second ago there there was quite a few ink sacks and if we just come down here now although I haven't really done anything particular and actually sort of looking through any of the local caves or anything like that to make sure there's no water down at this level already okay saying that it now decides not to spawn anything. Typical. Trust me, it has. Here we go. Yay! So it's working fine. Little squiddies are um, spawning, sinking down through the water, and then obviously, as soon as they get to the bottom there, they've got nowhere else to go. They fall splat. Okay, next thing to do now is to run a track all the way around on the ground here so that I can have a little minecart hopper, or hopper minecart running around here collecting all these ink sacks and um, profiting. Here we go! That <laughs> well, that was close, I was going to hit by it. Okay, oh, here comes another one. Ready, let's see if I can catch him. Come on, down you come. I can see you. Come on. Stop swimming. Ah. Oh. You're social sound, so you're swimming up the top there. Come on, down you come. It's much more fun down the bottom here. Come on. Kitty! He's up there, look, I can see him, there he is. But he's worked out how to swim upwards. Yeah. I want to try and catch him. No, he's not going to come down, is he? Okay, well anyway, farm is now working. As I said, it's AFK, you're having to run, oh, not AFK, it's manual, you're having to run round. But it will be AFK soon, so. I'll see you again in a second once this is all done. Bye bye. Okay, welcome back, and we're all now done with the, uh, the squid farm. So, just one, one thing you notice there is my, uh, unfortunately my nether portal's moved. So the portal's through from my base, much like when I had with the uh, the quad spider spawner. I've now also got a problem where my uh, squid farm is now also causing my portal to change, but it's not too much of a problem. Okay, so, changes are made. As you can see, I've got a little AFK area here. Oh, I just saw a squid drop down then. You see the system's all working nicely. I've got flooring down there, so there's a hop of mine cart running around underneath. I've got a little maintenance tunnel here, just in case there's any problems. I can come all the way down here to the bottom. And just check to make sure that the mine cart's doing its thing, which it is quite happily, which is good. And then look up through there, that gap there, you can just about see the uh, Tunnels of water, tubes of water as they go down. Yes, yeah, so the minecart does its thing going round. It should then head towards us, drop off any ink sacks, but there aren't any. And away it goes. Okay, so yeah, so there's. Oh, there you go, just heard one drop down. So you should find now when it comes, when the uh, minecart comes back, 
we should find that it will stop off and drop off some uh, ink sacks. Let's just check that working. Here it comes. Yep. There you go. Drop them off, and the hoppers just, or well, sorry, the droppers just push them now down into the water stream. Okay, so that shows that system's working. Can't really see the script from here, so all we do is come up to the top into the little viewing area and AFK section. Close the door behind me. Yeah, so now you can actually see them. Obviously, with me standing this close, they're not working. But if I head on back over to here, here, to the AFK platform, there you go, you can see them straight away. I'll just zoom in. There you go, they're starting to drop. And what happens is the ink sacks come up, and you can either, if you're standing here, you can catch them, or if you're not standing here, they go into the uh, drop, uh, chest there. And there's um, hoppers all underneath all of this collecting them as they come up. So what we'll do, hopefully we should see the ones that have just dispersed there and they should start coming up. There you go. There they go, they're going up and they're just disappearing into that chest. There you go, filling that up. So, all working really nicely. Very effective little system and oh, there goes another one. And we certainly should, should find ourselves never running out of um, ink sacks in the future, which is good. Okay, on to the next mission for the day. See you in a bit. Bye bye. Welcome back. Um, I've been quite busy since you've been away, and this will give you an idea as to what I've been doing. Ice cube, you can just about see it up there in the distance. Let's try to look at it. As you can see, I've landscaped all around here a little bit just to uh, make this a nice little pathway up here so there's no jumping involved. I've also widened this pathway up here, made it too wide all the way up, and just to make things a bit safer. Okay, as you come up here, you can see the ice. Well, I did have just a basic ice lake here where I could get a little bit of ice from, which was working quite well, but I thought I'd get something a little bit more automated. Um, and this is a nice little video I found on YouTube, which again, if I remember, I'll pop a, dis a link to in the description. Um, but basically, over there, there's a single, um, well, there's a three wide um, water source. So the center water source is the one that freezes, and the two outer ones are the ones that replenish it. When the ice block freezes, that then sets off a, a, a bud update detector system there, which pushes the ice block across. And it comes across into here. Obviously, as it comes all the way across, then another bud over here is detector goes off, which then fires these pistons at the bottom off, which pushes the ice up. And then once that happens six times, then this top piston just here is another bud that fires off, and then that sets off this whole wall, which then pushes forward and pushes this whole cube out. Now it's not the most um, I should say, time efficient um, system I suppose. It's obviously where it's only got the single source block it takes quite a long time to build up a, a block like this because um, obviously it takes quite a while for a single block of water, a single um, block of water to freeze. So it's not the, the fastest of farms by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but the idea being is the fact it's going to be here for quite a while and you just come up here once in a while, AFK here for a little while in this nice safe room, which is, oh, you can get through the doorway, try again. <clears throat> there we go. So yeah, stand in this nice safe room in here, um, which is all protected, got a nice light source and everything. And you just leave the, leave yourself AFK here and it'll just gradually build up the ice. And then you can come along with your silk touch pick and do a bit of mining. And as you can see, we've got two, two blocks so far, so it's 10 wide by six high, so there's basically a stack in each line, and we've got two lines so far, so we've got a couple of stacks worth of of, block, of ice blocks there, which isn't bad by any stretch of imagination. And I've done a little bit of a, obviously the basic um, platforms just here, with the glass on the floor here to stop mobs from spawning, because obviously you can't have any light sources in here, because I'll didn't melt the uh, the ice. Um, and yes, yeah, so I've done a little bit of a design here on the outside, which I think looks quite nice. You can just trundle on down here a little bit. You know, get a sort of better view of the building, and I think, I think that's quite an effective little look. This building does look a lot better actually in the daytime, so what we'll do is we'll use a little bit of magic and we'll fast forward through to the daytime. 
and using the magic of Minecraft. Well, not really. All I've done is um, just waited here for a couple of minutes for the daytime to come. There you go, as you can see, it now looks quite nice during the daytime as well. Um, the idea being with these different coloured glass blocks is just to break up the blandness a bit. I think, yeah, I think it's quite an effective look. Right, well, I think that just about do us for this episode. Um, so, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. Uh, and if you don't already, please subscribe and please share this video with your friends. And I shall catch you again soon. Customary excellent review. There we go. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. See you again.